Welcome to Doug Does Stuff. I'm Doug, and yeah, we're still talking bed leveling on the Any Cubic Cobra S1 combo. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, Doug, another bed leveling video. Y'all did two already, and you're not wrong. But here's the thing. The comments in the last video were really good. There were some great ideas. There were some great questions and theories. And frankly, listen, we got to get to the bottom of this bed level compensation issue. Because let's be honest, it's pretty damn important for most of us. And talking about those last videos, get this. They're at like, one of them's over 3,000. One's in the 2,000s already. With the first one hitting a thousand views in under 10 hours. Listen, for a small channel like mine that just hit a thousand viewers, that's pretty mind blowing, right? So, a massive thank you to all of you who are watching, liking, and subscribing. Oh, yeah, that if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, go ahead and help out Doug Does Stuff by hitting the subscribe. I would re really appreciate it. And, uh, Thank you. Listen, I want to give a huge shout out to the comment section. Seriously, I appreciate all of the comments. The positive ones, the tough questions, the critical feedback. I appreciate them all, so thank you. And why? Because that's how we learn, right? By doing, by trying, by failing. It's the only way we learn and we move forward in this journey. So thank you and please keep it up. Because unless I fail, I don't know that I did it wrong. And I can't learn to get better. So keep it up. You guys are great. All right. So let's quickly recap the videos. In video one right here, we saw the Cobra S1 mechanically trying to compensate for the unlevel bed. We actually saw the Z-axis moving up and down. And that was the point of the video to see if it worked. And it was promising, but the layers were still a mess. Maybe our bed was a little too warped. In the second video over here... We dove into the software and tried leveling three different ways. And the results were, well, inconsistent to say the least, right? Each test gave us something different. With the first test, you know, having a solid over here and then some missing layer lines. The second test being a complete mess. And the third one being like a sheet of paper. So a good bed level. Well... That brings us to today's video, which was largely inspired by your comments, right? I heard your ideas about heat being the third print making a difference, heard questions about the process and, and Z offset and flow and, and all of that. Had a great suggestion from a commenter, Sloth Squatch, who doesn't even own a 3D printer, came up with an idea for a fourth print, uh, which was a great idea, but unfortunately, the options don't work that way, but it made me think about the G-code being created by the slicer and sent with leveling versus the G-code being sent and then the printer doing the leveling before. Is there something to it? I don't know. All right. And now, everyone else who commented that they were trying to, or they were going to try and replicate my results, that's incredible. Thank you. I'm, I'm super eager to see what you came up with. So post your comments down below and let me know how it went. And listen, any cubic, if you're listening, and I hope you're listening, take note that your customers are spending their money and their time to try and figure out a fix or figure out the problem. So, hey, how about a fix or maybe a roll of filament because... Every time you print it, it's like 40 cents in filament. What do you say? All right. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to rerun the tests, but with a few changes based on your feedback. And maybe some of my own suspicions. I'm thinking there's e either an issue with how the slicer is generating the G-code to include the bed leveling, the AI, the flow, and all that, and sending it over versus... The printer take or the slicer just exporting G code and then the printer running it on its side. Right? It's got to be something. So the plan, which you can see here, 
is to one, prep, two, run a full printer calibration, test one, we're going to uh, slice it and export it to the USB. Step two is we're just going to slice it and remote print it. Three, we are going to slice it, click the remote print, and uh, sorry, the bed level, and then send it. And then four, the sloth squatch modified idea is we're going to take the same file that was on the USB stick and we're just going to click up here auto leveling before we run the print. And we want to see if there's a difference. All right. And then when we're done, we'll come back and we'll compare them all. Okay. So with the plan kind of locked in, it's going to involve a lot of printing, a lot of time. You don't need to sit here and, and watch me do all of that. So I'm going to get these rolling and it's time for a little uh, print montage right here. So while those are laying down plastic, let's chat for a minute here. Or if you prefer, use those chapter markers if you want to jump straight to the results. No judgment here, but you might want to hear what I have to say. So about this warped bed, my bed is pretty warped. I can fit a piece of cardstock underneath it around the edges when those screws are tightened down uh, on the corners. I reached out to any cubic, and to their credit, they are stepping up and sending me a new bed. And that's great. And I actually, I really appreciate that they are doing that. But here's my honest take. Every time I contact them, it feels like they run through a quick troubleshooting checklist, direct me to their wiki. I do that, and if it doesn't work, they send me parts. And that's good. I've gotten a few parts from any cubic, and if it helps fix the printer, I appreciate that. But really, it kind of feels like they're just throwing parts at a problem rather than truly investigating the root cause of the problem. It would be great if any cubic could try and fix what's going on. So my real hope with uh, the videos like these is that we as a community can highlight these persistent issues. While there are a lot of people out there who say, Doug, I've printed 500 hours and it's perfect. And you look at all those sponsor videos and advertising videos and it looks great. But listen, I'm not the only one experiencing the problems with the Cobra S1 like the bed leveling or the nozzle or the motherboard stuff, right? So maybe with these videos, just maybe, we can help drive a real fix for everyone. What are your experiences with support if you had to reach out? I'd be interested to know, so let me know in the comments. All right, let's get back to watching these finish up and see what, uh, what we can get out of it. All right, moment of truth. The printer's done. I ended up doing way more than just the four prints we were talking about, so let's get going through them. Here's that first print, which was run just from the printer, and yeah. The second one, the best of the bunch, was the uh, remote print, no bed leveling turned on, and you can see we have two areas down here. Put that one to the side. Test three uh, was the worst, and that was bed leveling turned on in the slicer, right? Test four was the Sloth Squatch modified way, which was run it from the USB stick with the auto leveling turned on. I'd say that sliced up pretty poorly, and it's all sliced up. I had to keep going because I wasn't getting the results I wanted. So the next step I took was to run a 60 degree 15 minute heat soak on the bed i ran it from the printer itself uh, with the bed level uh, on the printer turned on and a little yeah no not good not changing anything here other than the buttons i'm checking and, and running it from the printer or the slicer my sixth one was the 60 degree 15 minute heat soak with the bed level checked in the slicer on a remote print and another different non-consistent print. And then I said, okay, let me keep going. But this time I'm going to dry the filament. I used the filament dryer on the Ace Pro, which I really do like that idea. 
I dried it for six hours. I did a heat soak on the bed and I did the bed level in the slicer. And wow, I don't know, it's a little bit better. But again, we have some capping here and here. Put that to the side. And then this one, I, I did so many, I don't even remember what this one was, but it was after I did the um, drying of the filament. I think this was my remote print. And while the outsides were better, the inside, not so good. So remote print, bed slicer. And then my last one over here that I just got done, um, I tried to tweak the screws and uh, adjust them. And all of a sudden this got worse and this got worse. So what that is telling me is, back you up here. What that is telling me is that we have a bed problem. Our bed is warped. The slicer can't compensate for it or the printer can't compensate for it. So satisfying. Uh, the printer can't compensate for the, the bed level. It doesn't have enough either uh, range of motion or there's something wrong with the firmware that it's just not compensating enough. Sure, I could lower the Z offset and just squish it in to compensate for that. Um, I could probably increase the flow uh, of the filament. I am using the standard um, AnyCubic profiles, right? I could put more plastic down, but is that just masking the problem? I don't want to mask a problem. I want to fix a problem. So our verdict, we don't have one. Our verdict is... I don't think it matters necessarily if you run it from the USB stick, like we originally thought, versus the remote print. I don't think if it matters that you heat soak, because the last three weren't heat soaked and the other ones were. I don't think that matters. I, yeah, I, I think the verdict is there is, like I just said, there there's a problem with either the bed being too warped for the uh, printer to overcome it. Um, I think that's what we're dealing with. So what would be great would be if you could see the bed mesh in a cubic, which I know you said no to, to see how unlevel our, our printer bed is. And that's where we're going to go next. That's our next video. From here, we're going to go and get wrinkles. And uh, we'll see that in the next video. And we're going to install it. Because apparently on wrinkles, you can see the bed mesh. And then we're going to see how warped is our bed because if we go over to our ender threes over here on my old ender 3 v2 neo you can see the bed mesh and this is what i'm talking about you can see here i know that that top right there 0 0.10 versus my 0 0.01 that's how warped the bed is and knowing that if, if I can't get the printer to adjust for it, I could take a little piece of blue tape and put it under that corner to raise up that one spot and make it a little bit better so it doesn't have to compensate as much as, um, you know, that that amount of, of difference. So anyway, that's where we're going to go. We're going to try and see that on our AnyCubic Cobra S1. I'm Doug. Thanks for watching and sticking with me. You guys have a great day. Happy printing. And let's solve this thing. And come on, Anycubic. I've gone through almost a full roll of filament trying this.